Quite a lot of things happened on Apollo 8 that were, you know, unplanned. Since this was the uh, first flight on the Saturn V, first flight to the moon, uh, first of a lot of things, it was uh, a pretty risky flight. Sideways shaking was unbelievable. The vibration was so intense you couldn't see the instrument panel. And the thrust looks good. All engines, all sources show the stage is burning perfectly. The third stage fires twice. First, the boost into orbit. The second burn takes the crew of Apollo 8 where no men have ever been, deep space. There was no way that the Earth's gravity could hold us back any longer. So we were on our way. We could see the Earth, and we could actually see the Earth shrink. It was quite a sensation. Apollo 8 is shooting blindly for the moon. Computers calculate their trajectory. If the numbers are off by even a little, they'll either crash into the lunar surface or miss the moon completely and just keep going. This was one of the more exciting parts of the flight because we knew that if we lost radio communication when we were masked by the moon, when we were supposed to on the flight plan, we were exactly on trajectory. All right, now you're going command reset, tape recorder, forward low bit rate. And at the exact millisecond we were supposed to lose the radio, we lost it. You stop to think, going 240,000 miles and then aiming for a point 60 miles above a surface, but I think we came out within a mile and a half of where we were supposed to be. For the first time in human history, men look upon the far side of the moon with their own eyes. They're just 70 miles away. Well, it was on, a, I don't know, sixth or seventh or eighth revolution we looked up. And that's when, when we came into sunlight, we were all totally amazed by the earth rise. A beautiful sight. It's tiny out there, it's inconsequential. It was ironic that we had uh, come to study the moon and was really discovering the Earth. And God bless all of you, all of you on the good Earth. It's still amazing. It's still a the crew of Apollo 8 captured the world's attention. And as you heard, they are here today. Frank Borman served as commander, also a veteran of uh, Gemini 7 space orbital rendezvous with Gemini 6, that was in 1965. James Lovell served as command module pilot and navigator. At one time, Lovell held the record for the time in space. And William Anders served as the lunar module pilot. He took the famous photograph of the Earth rising over the moon's horizon. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. We're delighted to have you here. And why don't you greet him as well? That's great. That's our museum audience, and I would like the studio audience to be prepared to ask questions as we go throughout this program. I want to hear your questions as well. I have a bunch of them here. That I've been since I've been doing some research, and gentlemen, thank you very much. Frank, let me start with you, if I may. In September, I, if, if my research is correct, it was in September of 1968, the unmanned Russian, uh, what was that, uh, Zon 5, Zon 5, uh, made an orbit of the moon. Did this affect your mission? I'm not certain whether it affected our mission or not. I, I was told that the CIA had intelligence that uh, they, they were, Russians were going to try to put a man around it before the end of the year. And uh, that was the reason for the change in our mission. Because after all, 
the Apollo program was just a battle in the Cold War. That's what it was fundamentally a battle in the Cold War. Boy, you hammered it, you hammered the uh, the whole theme of my, my series of questions here. Oh, but, I'm sorry. No, that's, that's great. I, that's you great. want to start over? No, all, all, all I have to do is shut up. Point. <laughs> and you want to shut up? The uh, James, what was the original mission? How did it change? The original mission actually uh, was an Earth orbital mission uh, to test the. Uh, a command module again and the lunar module uh, for the first time and to make sure that both of them would work before we committed them to the moon and we'd also do a high speed reentry uh, 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 just like we would come back from the moon to test out the reentry procedure of this super circular type of reentry uh, and of course uh, when uh, Apollo 7 went 11 days was successful and we had some idea that, that uh, Frank mentioned that the uh, Russians were going to put a man around the moon, uh, and the lunar module was not ready by 1968. Then a very bold decision on the part of NASA management uh, decided to take Apollo 8 around the moon. Well, bold it was. Uh, 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 Bill, the, what would you think the odds of success for this bold mission? Did you, did you calculate that at all? Well, frankly, uh, I thought... Um, we had about a one chance in three of having a successful mission. Another one chance in three of having a mission like Apollo 13 where they made it back but weren't able to accomplish the landing. And then maybe a one chance in three of not making it back. Well, that's pretty chilling. Those aren't very good odds, are they? Well, you, you keep in mind, as Frank said, uh, this was not a program to explore the moon or develop uh, technology. It was a program to demonstrate mm -hmm. to the world and to ourselves that American te technology was preeminent and that we could beat the Soviets in that regard. And that's where the new Saturn rocket came into this mix? Saturn rocket was necessary in order to do this. The, um, of course, there were one thinks and one believes and one has been told that the NASA always been very fastidious about testing before sending any humans out on these kinds of missions. What were their... Were there concerns about using the new Saturn after just such limited testing? Let me ask you first. I, I didn't have any concern with that. One of the, each astronaut had a special. They might happen to be boosters. So I spent a lot of time at Huntsville and helped to, de to develop the crew escape system and so on. And the, the people at Huntsville were confident that they had been able to correct the difficulties that were experienced on the first two Saturn V flights. There had been two unmanned flights before. And the, the second one was almost a disaster, but uh, they, they what were, happened? I didn't remember. Well, they had a, a engine shut down. They had an enormous pogo. The uh, an 18-inch beam was uh, vibrating over a foot. It was a, a real disaster. But uh, they they convinced the NASA management, and I was convinced that they they knew how to solve it, and they did. Going back to that film we just saw there, uh, Jim, you were obviously the first. Uh, men to both leave the Earth's gravitation and see the dark side of the moon. You were the first ones to ever do that. Th that. That precise timing, what concerns did you have at the time before you went on that mission? Well, Nick, I really didn't have much concern. I, I was sort of happy that that decision was made. And I agree with Frank that uh, I didn't have any uh, apprehensions about the Saturn V. I, uh, since Apollo 7 went around the Earth for 11 days, I thought going to the moon would be a, a natural follow-on. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were three explorers doing something entirely different. We were going the entire distance, 240,000 miles, and we're going to see the far side of the moon, which we never see the far side, of course, from the Earth. And so I was quite excited about it. Uh, it was, though, in the morning when we got to the top of the gantry and my two companions went into the spacecraft first it was still dark out and the press car started to come and man the station and I looked at him and I looked down at the ground and I said these people are really serious <laughs> <laughs> this is not another earth orbital flight this is going to the moon and that maybe was the time when I said well here we go <laughs> I guess you all said here. We, I want to get to that picture, uh, uh, Bill. You were talking about this before, in the uh, in that film we just saw, uh, that the the Earth rising above the horizon of the Moon. Uh, we saw two pictures there, I believe, of that shot. Which one was yours, or were they both yours? 
Well, first of all, I'd like to say that if Frank had told me about this vibration, I'm not sure I'd have gone. <laughs> <laughs> first I heard about it. <laughs> the pogo. But I, did have, I did have my blanket.